Hi there, my name is Lars Sunson. Uh, great that you're watching. We're creating this content for you over at iTelesis. And uh, we got a lot of uh, summed up for you. You can check it all out on our video channel. Uh, keynote speakers, presenters, and paper writers. We're going to talk to Bruce Draper, who uh, works at Colorado State University, and uh, dive into how AI is in our daily life, and we're interacting with it. If we go back to the beginning of the computer ages, when the computer was just a tool working for you, and now we're talking to computers and even want them to interact with us. Uh, think like Siri and Alexa. Well, uh, Mr. Draper, I'm, I'm, I'm on, the, on that track myself, and I'm talking to my phone, asking it to get me uh, a cab or something mm -hmm. uh, like that. And what kind of problems or issues are we facing when we are interacting more and more with these smart systems? Well, let's take Siri, for example, and, and Siri's a great example, and Apple's done a great job with it. But if you're talking to Siri, and you ask it a very simple question, you say, what am I pointing at? The answer literally comes at, good question. Yeah. Because Siri has no embodiment. She's not watching what you do. She doesn't know the objects around you. Siri is purely a word-level communication. Mm -hmm. Now, words are critical, right? We invented them for communication. They're great. But so much of communication is gesture and expression and prosody. Like the nonverbal aspects. All aspect. the nonverbal yeah. aspects of communication are really critical. And if our agents don't share those, then they can't help us with so much of what we do day to day. So what we're trying to do is get into a more of a situation where the, your agent is a peer, and for that to be true, the agent has to know where you are, what you're doing, what your expression is, Right, all these other forms of communication. And so that's why we're trying to go to multimodal agents. And, and this is also where we get into uh, an, uh, how, you, how would you say that, uh, uh, an area where a lot of people will say, whoa, wait a minute, I'm going to have to uh, share more information with this agent for it to uh, deliver me a good service, but am I already uh, uh, to and that point? Well, I, I'm not sure if we're at that point yet because our agents aren't that far yet, but it's a real concern. I don't minimize the concern at all. Um, I think what happens is we, even now we've given up, you know, we have agents, we tell Siri all kinds of stuff. We do that because the benefit we get from it, right, the handiness of, of having Siri mm -hmm. is, is important to us. And I think as agents get to watch us and have physical objects and be embedded in our space, they'll become even more important to us. They'll become even more useful to us. But at the same time, you will be giving them more data. So there is a whole level of you know, legal and societal ethics that have to come along with it. Yeah. Um, but I think that's already in play with, with the word-based. We're just you know, ramping up the scale. But then if we're thinking like the early adapters and the fast movers, people that really like tech to do more, uh, the answer is right there, right? The more you let tech take a place, the, 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 but you're taking a risk, you're, you're letting your data out, uh -huh. but you're getting benefit from it. Yeah. Now, if you feel like that trade-off is worth it, then, then do it. You know, be an early adopter of the kinds of systems that yeah. we're building. If you're a little more cautious, hold off until some of these yeah. other processes have been worked out. If we take in mind uh, what these processes uh, mean and the development of us people in our inter more and more interacting with, uh, w with smart agents with uh, artificial intelligence. In, in which fields do you think we, c we have the most to gain if we, we see this development and follow it a little bit into the future? Um, well, I think there are probably too many to name, so let me just pick one out, it won't be much. Sure. Um, but right now you see this whole world of do-it-yourself guides, right? So the other day I needed to fix the disposal under my sink, and what did I do? I go to YouTube and look at the video. Uh -huh. Sounds great. Yeah. Except then I crawl under my sink and it doesn't look anything like what it did in the YouTube <laughs> video. Now, imagine instead that you had an intelligent agent with a camera looking around going, no, 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 this is the thing you're supposed to loosen. Ah. Right? Think how much helpful that would be. And, you know, for someone myself who I admit I'm not the handiest person in the world, a sort of universal do-it-yourself guide that would interactively look at where I am and what I'm doing and what the objects are uh, would be so much more helpful. I think we could sort of all do things for ourselves that we c currently most of us don't have the expertise to do. Here you name, uh, also because of time, uh, just one uh, example, mm -hmm. but immediately my mind, and I can uh, 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 imagine the mind of our viewers as well, start, will start imagining what this all could do, also in a commercial as uh, aspect. If my mechanic in the, the, the car shop has uh, an assistant, uh, will my car be 
ready faster. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying to think a lot of uh, surgeons. You know, imagine motor pools of ah. any large trucking company, right? All kinds of different trucks come in, and you're constantly, and you, probably the set of mechanics is constantly turning over. Think how useful that could be. Um, I think pretty much in any physical, in any in industry that's physical as opposed to just abstract information, right? Right now, a, a word agent is great for Google because all they deal with is abstract information. But any industry that's dealing with physical parts and physical mechanics and people have to be building things and assembling things um, would be revolutionized. I mean, think about, uh, think about how useful IKEA furniture would be if, if instead of having those little printed uh, descriptions that we all struggle with, Right, we had an agent telling us exactly what things to put together when. Yeah. Oh, and we just add maybe some ho hologram. The agents could be standing right next to me, right? right. Or the, the <laughs> or imagine the agent is a camera on your glasses and uh -huh. it's, it's co-located with you, right? Yeah. And, it's, and, and it's got uh, sort of like Google Glass and projects a hololens and says, no, 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 this thing, dummy. Yeah. But um, flash forward to uh, uh, another 50 years, uh, will we still be needing this interaction? Because I can imagine if more and more gets uh, robotized and, and smarter, then this uh, thing that I need from IKEA, as you mentioned, obviously I will think of what I need. Uh, IKEA will put it in a, in a drone and deliver it to my house. <laughs> and then AI will build it for me. I won't have to interact any, any th anymore at all. It's possible, right? But one of the things that we've learned about AI is that robotics is hard. Right? Particularly fine scale robotics, fine manipulation, that sort of thing. And if you think about the do it yourself world, you are a wonderful robot. Your hands are great, your body is great. Um, and so, yes, maybe someday we'll get to the point where the whole process can be turned into a, a robot operation. But at least for the, f you know, the next 25 years, I rather expect uh, we're not going to have a robot who's, who's, dex who's as dexterous as we are. Um, and therefore, you know, have it, keeping us as part of this process is useful. Also, I think a lot of people like building things by their hands. If True. they're not frustrated yeah. by not knowing what, what, you know, what they're doing. Um, so I think people want to be a part of the loop. They don't want to completely take themselves out of it. We would be bored out of our minds. We would. We, we need yeah. things to do, right? We need, we need challenges. Yeah. Um, that said, yeah, robotics are coming. I want to thank you so much for uh, uh, sharing your thoughts uh, so, so briefly because we understand you have so much experience you could uh, uh, literally uh, give us information for hours. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that time on YouTube, but we do have a lot of hours of content on YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel. And if you want even more, then you're invited to join us for one of our other conferences. We're having them all over the world, so please find one that's close to you and be here in person so we can interact with you human to human. Thank you for watching.